guys, David Peterson, publicdomainphotography.com. I'm going to go through with you today Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. First of all, open up your newly um, downloaded Photoshop store, shopfront, whatever you want to call it, your business place. What we're going to do is have a quick look here. It immediately comes up. You've got options to open documents that you've been previously working on. Comes down with last open, name, size, kind. Immediately very convenient. Um, let's create a new document here. We can either create a new document here or we can do file, new. And then um, we can choose our options here. Now I'm going to trade a custom document that suits the needs for this um, we'll call it uh, tutorial one um, we've got the width uh, just defaults fine 2100 pixels but you can adjust this you've got um, portrait and landscape modes um, resolution um, 300 pixels an inch you can adjust that how you like and you've got red it's pre predetermined uh, um, red green blue um, color um, and that is ideal for most of your applications these days uh, if you're doing any planning on any serious printing then it may be worth considering the option of c m y k i mean a lot of the um really really top professionals talk about um red green and blue being good for digital and um c and magneta yellow and magenta sorry yellow and black um, be an ideal for physically printed materials now my understanding of this is only basic but it's to do with the original printing press and the way they laid colors up on each other and they were done in cyan um, magenta yellow and black um, so we'll create the document guys and uh, you can see it here immediately we have a just a nice plain canvas ready to work now just before we get started and this will all be in the menu so don't worry we've got um just i'm using a pc today so i'll be referring to pc um commands controls um but i'll give you the mac options as well so you've got control on a windows pc in a mac equals command You've got Windows PC, um, Alt equals Mac option. You've got Backspace, Mac equals Delete. And you've got Right Click, Mac equals Control. So one good thing about this um, brand new Photoshop is, let me just make this full screen size. You've got a uh, rich tool tips in the Photoshop and the, you see the way it shows the little video as well, shows how to use it. Um, it's kind of doing my job for me. So you've got move tool, which um, shortcut on the keyboard is V, this applies across the board. Now the move tool falls into the selection tools. Um, I've broke these down into a number of groups. Seven groups. Um, first of all, we'll cover the selection tools. And so you've got move tool within there as well. You've got artboard. Next, you've got rectangular marquee tool, which is M. Um, in there, you've got elliptical marquee, single column, and single row. Coming down further, you've got under L, so shortcut L. You've got lasso, polygonal lasso, magnetic lasso. Coming down here, you've got your quick selection tool and your magic wand. Then moving on to crops and slice tools. So you can, of the quick selection tool, sorry, was W and magic ones W for the shortcut. Crop tools um, begin with C, which is pretty intuitive. So you've got crop tool, perspective crop, slice, and slice select. And then um, coming down to measuring tools. So you've got eyedropper, 3D material eyedropper, Color sampler, ruler, note, and I uh, and count, and these come under I for your shortcut on your keyboard. 
then looking into retouching tools so coming on to retouching tools now you've got a spot healing brush you've got a healing brush you've got a patch tool patch content aware and red eye now one thing i will say with the um with, with here is you've got a, your easy one is j spot healing brush these are all extremely valuable tools Just skipping over one, we'll go to the clone stamp tool because we're just looking at retouching tools at the minute. So clone stamp comes under S, pattern stamp also falls under S, and then um, coming down, you've got your eraser tool, background eraser, magic eraser. And then um, these actually, these next ones, eraser tools at E, which is intuitive, but then the next one's falling into the retouching tools which are blur tool, sharpen tool, and smudge tool, don't have any actual shortcut, which is, <laughs> I'm not, I, it never has, I, I'm not 100% sure why. And then lastly, in the retouching tools, you've got dodge, uh, burn, and sponge. These are all shortcut O. Then coming into the painting tools, we'll start off with the brush um, tools, which is B, again, intuitive. Within the within the uh, painting tools, initially um, holding over this icon, you've got brush, you've got pencil, you've got color replacement, and you've got mixer brush. And then we come down to the history brush and the art history brush, and these are under Y. Um, and then we come down to the gradient, um, which are under G. You've got your paint bucket tool there, gradient tool, and 3D metal drop. Then we'll come down from the, we're moving on from the painting tools to the drawing type tools. So we'll go in with a pen initially, P for the pen. You've got a freeform pen, add anchor point, delete anchor point, and convert point. And um, moving down, this is your text tool. Um, again, in the drawing and type tools, this is T for shortcut. You've got horizontal type, vertical type horizontal type mask and vertical type mask and um, then we come on to a selection a which is path selection and direct selection and then we're going to go still within the drawing and type tools we're going to look at the rectangle tool which is under U, and you've got a rectangle rounded rectangle eclipse polygon line custom shape and then finally, we're going to have a quick look at the navigation tools. And you've got the hand tool. You've got rotate right, and which comes under H and R shortcut. And then you've got the zoom tool, which is a shortcut Z. In case you missed any of that, guys, I'll be attaching a link to this um, Uh, shortcut menu bar that I've created for you um, and this will be available at the bottom of the video so please don't hesitate to check it out N next we'll be covering what some of these tools actually so I'm just going to go through how the actual tools work now I'm just going to fire open an image here uh, it doesn't really matter which one just opening one up just add a little bit of a uh, color just going to open the image we won't worry about that right now that was just called raw um, so with this image, um, first of all, what we'll do is we'll create a new layer. Um, so we'll hold it here, drag it down, and then you can see you've got the uh, new layer there. I'm going to straight away rename this layer so um, to Sunshine Layer 1. So this is going to be our layer that we can work on uh, here. So first of all, move tool. It's pretty self-explanatory. Hold it. Move around. You can see obviously it moves there. This is also the tool that you use if you want to drag and drop it to another image. The rectangular tool. You can hold it in there. Okay. And then you can 
either select the inverse, select the outside of that, uh, layer via cut, so you can see you've got that little bit missing out there. Little quick trick for you here if you want to undo is Control Alt Z. You can also um, Control T. Free transform. You see the way that goes around the selected area? Con that's free transform. To deselect Control and D, you can see there it's a right mess. So I'm just going to control Z that back to the original p position. Control and D. D selects. So you can look at the next tool. So say elliptical tool. If you hold shift, it will form a perfect circle. Make sure you release the mouse before you release the shift key. You can then select this with a control and T if you want. And you can move that upside down control and tree is free transform I'll show you other mechanisms to achieve that later on control D to deselect and you can see there how that image is being cut out of it I've, I've done that within the layer um, and I'll just give you an example now if you want to do it in a different layer so right click um, sorry Select your elliptical marquee tool. Let's deselect that elliptical marquee tool. Let's take our selection. Right click. Layer via cut. Control T. Turn it around. Take the background out. Sorry. Double click it to open it. Take the, There you go. So you're getting the hang of that now. Very interesting little tool. Um, we'll... Uh, take that back a step and then we'll uh, control D it control Z boom and then what with this layer here uh, we obviously been playing around with it here so let's just take that right back so control alt Z will take you back a number of steps. You've got within there, you've got your single row marquee tool where you can select a row like this and then right click and uh, you can layer via cut and you can see that it just selects that tiny, tiny row just takes it out of there. I'm just uh, pressing Control Alt Z again single row column that's just for obviously very fine movements then you've got your lasso tool so your lasso tool interesting one you can do it like this see the way it makes a regular selection and then you can free transform if you want and straight away move that around um, free transform that is shortcut is control and T. Um, I'm just going to press control alt Z. Sorry, I'm going to just yep, go back there or file and um, edit uh, transform or free transform there. And then you've got transform options here as well. Um, control and T is the easiest way to achieve that. So you've got your lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool. Now you can click this, you don't have to hold the button. And just make an irregular shape. And um, you can right click inside there. You can layer it via copy if you want. Or layer it via cut if you want to cut it out. And then you can press control T if you want. And uh, squiggle that around. Or you can use the move tool. Um, move that where you want to move it to. Reposition it within the image. If you, In this case you'd be making some pretty weird image. And, and that one is great because you can actually choose your parameters um, very nicely. And then magnetic lasso tool, which basically it, it attempts itself to stick around. And then we're back to the beginning and we just click. And then we can uh, use what we've selected. Layer via copy. I don't know. And there you have it there. 
Um, control T if you want. Fiddle around. Reposition move tool. There you have it, guys. So that's that's your very very basic introduction to the um, uh, the lasso tools, which you can see they're just pretty handy um, uh, with different images in this. Now the next image is quick selection tool and magic wand tool. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to just um, find you a more effective image to use this on. So let's go with. Let's go with a satellite station. A bit random, but uh, it'll do. Keep the order one raw there. See a bit of stars in the background, not a bad image. So here you've got quick selection tool. So just hold the mouse. You can go around. It selects it out from the background. You can see there's a little error there. Um, but see the way it just drags it around, follows the body very nicely, yeah? right click um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select inverse then I'm going to layer via cut and you can see right there what has gone on quick cut out you can obviously use it inside these smaller areas take a bit of time with it very effective very quick very easy to use tool and, um, and then I'm going to just do a quick back step and then I'm going to deselect this, Control and D. And I'm just going to quickly show you the Magic Wand tool. So Magic Wand tool, see here how that's actually kept in that border. And you'll be able to do that a bit better yourself. Only thing with the Magic Wand tool is you can click it once and then it selects different areas. So for this example, what I'll do with the Magic Wand tool is I'm going to just Control and D that, deselect it. I'm going to add this uh, background copy, get rid of this one, and then we'll hit here. And I'm just going to press delete, okay? Just going to press delete, just going to press delete, just going to press delete, just going to press delete. So you get the point, yeah? Just a quick, easy tool to select. And then you can drop a different background in there if you like. Um, and so you could put this satellite station, for example, against a, a background of space, a background of, um, you know, deep space or... If you wanted to, you could drop in like a, a crazy moon or something in behind. So let's have a look what that looks like. And let's just order that. Okay. And then I'll just drag this over to the right level, guys. And then uh, let's put that behind there so you can see it. So, I mean, yeah, I'd have to think more about it, but you fundamentally get the point. Um, select the layer that you're working on and uh, use your magic wand tool on that layer and then you'll see the moon peeking through the back so space station moon clouds yeah very very simple example just gonna deselect control and d and then um, control alt z that'll take me back right back to where we're working from and there's our original image right back there that's just your control alt z let's come back over to here Okay, now we move to the, the crop tool. So crop tool, just drag, drop, double click. That crops it, yeah? Control out Z, drag, drop, and then click somewhere else and it gives you the option. Crop, cancel, don't crop. So we'll go crop, there you have, again. Now one thing with crop that's interesting is it crops both layers. So just be aware of that, okay? And so uh, even watch this deselected this layer yeah oh sorry uh, crop tool crop look background wasn't selected still it's being cropped so just be wary of that just be very aware of that and if you're going to use that use a marquee tool or a rectangular um, rectangular marquee um, and select the area that you want to crop but you want to keep the original image intact Got perspective crop tool. Now this is phenomenal. Just takes a few minutes to load, but it just gives you the um, the depth. Unbelievable.
It's almost, uh, it basically warps it. Just uh, probably should have picked a more simpler image, guys, because it takes a bit of time. Um, as this goes through, we'll... Uh, I think I'll just have a drink, actually. Just hold on a few seconds, guys. This My clue, this is to upgrade my graphics card, I think. Wholesome glass of water going in. Yeah, so... I guess we just have to keep waiting. I could tell you a joke, but uh, I'm not very good at it. So Alt, hold Alt, and then scroll out. And as you can see there, you've got a perspective of the original image. It's it's a distorted perspective. Not ideal on this image choice. And um, just step backward. We'll work on the next next area. Slice tool. Select where you want to slice. Right click. Edit slice options. Can name it. Pretty straightforward, really. Divide the slice. Add a second slice. It's a uh, fairly functional, and then um, let's see how it goes, guys. Slice, 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 and then you've got that image divvied up nicely. Let me just get rid of those. I drop a tool, just matches the color that's there. See, color match. This this will enable you to use that same color if you wanted to in a different area. But you see, it just color matches. Wonderful stuff. Ruler. Ruler is really a handy, really, really, really handy, okay? Just, oh, sugar. Snap it down. Oh, hang on, window. Let me just have a look if it's uh, activated. Snaps on, ruler is on. Ruler was, uh, sorry, ruler was already on. So control R ruler, and we'll just move up to the uh, move tool, and we can bring the ruler down. Sorry, I didn't have the move to select the guys. And so the ruler just enables you to work on specific parts of the image, and also make sure you've got the central aspect of the image if you were working on summit. So for example, you wanted the central of the image because you were going to use the elliptical marquee tool around it. Just Hammer that in, uh, bring that up a little bit, get it nicely centered, and uh, sorry, get it nicely centered, and then you can fiddle around with it the way that we were showing you before with the control and T. Okay, so um, we'll get rid of the rulers for a second. So, uh, view, just turn the ruler off, and then I'll drag. Move back to the move tool, or just click V, and then drag this up, out the way, drag this to the side, out the way. Uh, control and D, D selects. One, two, three, you can mark areas of the image, guys. You may have seen this before, and then you can refer to them in your text box. Um, so you may say, look at look at number 23, where you can see the light coming through, sun rays at number 16, darker area number two. It's just a really, 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 really handy tool, guys, to keep with you. Um, certainly, keep it just marks areas. It's as simple as that, okay? Or you could make a little, little note on the uh, part of the image that says sun. Beam and this helps other people working on it where they can uh, they can make that decision as to whether they say you wanted a friend to have a look at a particular area that you were struggling with, then absolutely fine. Now spot healing brush we're coming on to next. Now we're moving into the retouching tools now.
so we're just going to take a quick look at those retouching tools so just right uh, open the image up now for retouching we'll get one of a uh, face they're, they're always pretty handy to retouch we'll just auto that drop that down a little bit increase the clarity just for making it a bit easier okay just open that image up so we'll kick off guys with the um, spot healing brush I'm um, in the retouching section uh, spot healing brush there J is the choice so easy way spot healing brush works is um, just increase the size and increase the hardness out how you want it you can you can get a different effect depending on the level of hardness that you apply um, to it so click the spot healing brush guys so there or you can bring that right up 100 percent or we can drop that right down 15 percent you see slightly slightly different effect there so i'm going to go with a um 100% just for this demonstration. I'm going to go spacing 75. And you can see freckles are slowly disappearing. Yeah. Now you see here, this is where you got to be careful. You try and mess around. But there are a few tricks for this which I'll show you in a second okay so we'll leave this one a bit messed up now if you want to cross her guys just press caps lock um, see the way it's changed to across it if you want to see the diameter of your um, pixel selection for the tool then click caps lock again um, both modes are equally good both have got different um, advantages and disadvantages control T Let's just um, bring back the move tool, control T. We'll um, crop this image a little bit. Just get it down to an area where we like it. So we'll use our rectangle tool, um, layer via cut. There we have it. So, clone stamp pool, um, pattern stamp tool. Pattern stamp's not really relevant on this image. Um, so, clone stamp. What we'll do, we'll bring this right down in size. Um, with clone stamp, what you've got to do is you've got to select Alt for the area where you want to do. And there you can see, guys, see the way we got rid of that? Uh, just press Alt in the area where you want to do. See the way we got rid of that little bit of rubbish there? And we'll get rid of that tint there. Basically, this is just a little bit more accurate than the, um, the Magic Heel Brush. Um, and just heal and brush tool, heal and brush what you can do. You Again, you alt click and select an area nearby where you want to heal. And there you have it, guys. So um, that's the clamp, the stamp tool covered. A razor tool is pretty self explanatory. Um, it erases stuff. There you go, see? Let's just get rid of that. We don't want to erase that right now. Background eraser tool, eraser the background, a magic eraser tool. So you can see here, you can wiggle it around, get your selection done, and it, it finds the area that it believes it not suitable in this image. You can see here that the, the iris um, is being removed, but the rest of it, not really appropriate for this particular image. However, you get the, get the gist of it. Um, next, you've got a blur tool, blur which comes with a blur, sharp and smudge. So blur first of all, and is just blur the area that you want to blur out. As you can see, it uh, becomes a bit blurry. Well, that would be, the name is the giveaway, I guess. See? Blur, no blur.
You can do it your sharpened tool. Just choose your size again, guys. Bring the hardness up a bit. Just brings it into focus a bit, the area. Sharpens it up. Smudge. See the way smudge works? Just smudges it. Yeah. And just uh, control alt z and that just to bring it back in then next we've got your dodge tool um burn and sponge so dodge tool just see the way that just lightens that a little bit yep burn tool just brings it down see see the color difference guys it's, it's just going to help you play with your images a bit and then your sponge tool once again fiddling about now we're going to move on to the painting tools guys so brush bring up your brush um, let's find another better image for this so we'll go with a brush tool and select your type of brush that you want and then we'll just write make sure you're on the right thing obviously just free text same with your pen your pen's just a little bit finer your pen tool um where are we sorry about that guys uh pen tool there just fine we've got color replacement and um you've got mixer brush tool this is the way it just mixes it a bit with the background merges a bit but you've got your text depending what type of uh effect you want to create uh, you're on the go straight away um history brush tool art brush tool they can just bring up um, areas of history that have already been removed now moving on to gradient so we'll come back to our tutorial one uh gradient one of my favorite tools here so click on gradient or select g um you can choose the different types so you've got a radial gradient um, depending on exactly what you're looking for guys so we'll start off with this side here drag it across boom Let's go for a central one. See how it starts off centrally. See the different effects, guys? That is your gradient tool in a nutshell. You can also choose different colors, get different effects. Absolutely wonderful little bit of equipment. This is this is a classic rainbow effect. And you don't have to go across that way. You can go this way. You can go this way. You can go that way. Or you can go that way. Doesn't matter. Gradient tool. Awesome little bit of kit. Paint bucket speaks for itself. There you go, see? now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the drawing tools type tools free pen anchor point so we're going to have a quick look at the paint bucket tool um i've just uh, got a demo for you here um so you can see that it's intuitive it fills in the shades of the color when you click on it it's under the gradients tab paint bucket tool to click on the target layer or you can just create a new layer and um, just create a new layer either click here layers button or layer new layer um, control shift n is the shortcut and just fill the layer in next we're coming on to is the dodge tool um, so dodge tool is just here on your menu bar you've got a dodge burn and sponge in the same section you've got always the shortcut for these now dodge and burn tools there are basically three ranges shadows midtones and highlights so you can select that here range shadow midtone highlights um, just on the top menu um, each choice will only affect the area um, falling into your category choice so um, expose your slider with value range from one to 100 uh, percent sets the intensity of the effect um, 50 means mid to mid it defaults at 50 for exposure uh 50 percent that is just here you can see the exposure and um to a maximum uh, 
that it will maximally darken all light in the area by 50%. So let's have a look, we'll zoom in a little bit for this effect guys. So initially we'll go with the dodge and I'll just show you what that does. So you see the way it dodge, just lightens there. It's in mid-tone, shadows, less so, and highlights. Just reduce the highlights a bit. Now you've got uh, your burn tool and you'll see a bit of a difference here. So again, you've got your exposure choice. You've got shadows, mid-tones, highlights. So mid-tones, darker, shadows. So you can see how this can have a, and, and highlights. Um, obviously it's got different applications depending on what you're doing. Just removing that for the next area and then you've got the sponge tool. There are two, mo two uh, mode choices with the sponge tool and we'll just come on to that now. So sponge tool, um, you've got desaturate, saturate. So saturate increases the saturation obviously um, and desaturate desaturates it. And you see there it's 50%. You can obviously increase your flow all the way up to 100 or right down, depending on your particular project that you're doing. Now just have a look at the pen tools. Pen tool is basically just a really, really good way of making a, a, a fine selection. Um, so this is a straight edge pen tool. You can play around with them a little bit um, just to get the right angle that you're looking for. Um, obviously not ideal in this particular case. It can be used. Uh, there are better methods I'll show you in a second. Um, and then what you do is once you've done that, you can either create a vector mask with your selection um, or you can um, free transform the path so you can make it bigger, smaller, um, just for your, whatever you need it for. Um, make selection. And then with the make selection, you can layer mask it and uh, just single out your selection. This is handy for cutting backgrounds out and things like that, the pen tool. And um, you've obviously got some other other choices within the pen tool. So um, free transform, basically uh, this one, you just hand draw it around, mar marry it back up. And then um, right click and you can do your create vector mask again. You can make the selection and uh, layer mask it, cut it out if you want. Um, you can, and, and obviously it's all selected there. So deselect. Then you've got curvative, so curvative speaks for itself. It follows the curves around a bit better. A little bit handier for eyes. And again, when you get to the end, it's just uh, involves um, making the selection and then uh, you can clip it if you want or whatever you need um, and obviously you've got your other options as well uh, from the core from the core file I'm just going to control D that this is just about giving you a rough idea add anchor point tool delete anchor point tool and convert pen tool next you've got text horizontal type vertical type it speaks for itself um, but let's just uh, let's just have a look here what we can do. So you've got a selection in the top menu here of uh, various types of texts. Um, you can download more text. I'll show you that in a different video. You can choose the size of your font. You can choose um, the crisp sharp, and um, you can choose how it presents. So we're going with a uh, hello. A little bit of a tattoo there on the face, not good. If you're not into them, that is. And obviously you can uh, switch this around. Hello, hello. So pen tool, just have a play with, but uh, you've got the same options that you can middle, um, how you approximate the, the edges. There's also a 3D option these days which always is fun, takes a little bit of time. Would you like to create a 3D workspace? So this basically, as you can see guys, just brings you around into a um, bit of a 3D workspace. 
Uh, so this used to be a bit of a pain before uh, Photoshop introduced this new tech. You see, we can rotate that round. You can see it right there. Hello. Obviously, this is going to need a separate video in itself. We'll come back to layers. We'll see what we've got. So you've got a 3D text there. Just going to get now, one there. area that complements your pen tools, and I'll just script another document quickly. Let's have a look for one that we've got open. Um, one area that complements your um, pen tools a little bit is uh, here. Um, path selection tool. It just lets you select the path that you've created with the pen tool. I'll just give you a super, super quick example. Just bear with me for a second, guys. And then it's path selection tool. This is the way you can move it, the actual path, to where you want it to go, or you can uh, right click and um, you can delete the path. You can create a vector mask with the path. Um, it's handy if you've got some object that you particularly want to shape out. Um, you can free transform the path. And obviously free transform we've looked at, you just move that around. And so you've got you've got options, so we're not going to apply that. And we're going to, uh, let's just um, make selection, OK. And then Control D, that just gets rid of it. So that I mean that's just a complementary one for your path, basically direct selection tool and path selection tool, um, and, and and I guess it's a, it's again a case of just playing around with it and making it work. Yeah, just for a you. very very quick look, guys, at the hand tool. Hand tool, just select it there. Um, it's fundamentally uh, pans over different parts of the image. That's what it says. It just grabs. But one thing you can do, right click, and um, you can zoom it straight to one hundred percent. You can fit it to the screen. Um, also in this you've got rotate view, which is down as R. See the way it comes up with the nice compass, so you can rotate it. Um, obviously you've got zoom here, uh, Z, zoom in. These are just different choices that you've used already. If you ever want to default your colors back to black and white, just click this box here, or press D, um, switch foreground, background color. Um, this is a quick mask tool, which I'll explain in another video and uh, screen changes. All right, guys, um, hopefully that gives you a very, very interesting introduction into the world of Photoshop CC 2018. I'm David Peterson, Public Domain Photography. Hope to see you there. Stay tuned with us for more videos about the features of Adobe Photoshop CC 2018, and uh, they will get better and better, guys. This is just a very basic introduction onto the tools panel or otherwise an overview of the tools panel. Thanks.